Hi folks, this is CU again. Today is about the understanding of the AND function. So for this, just for the understanding, I prepared a, uh, a nice application for you. A little uh, application simulating uh, the starting uh, you know, equipment related to the pulp and paper industry. And here it is. When you have a piece of equipment and safety is involved, everybody is expecting to have standard stop buttons, these red ones. Everybody is expecting, if I'm just putting it on for a second, by having this motor running, to have an emergency button available. And also available the simulation of a safety curtain, so anytime you put a hand in a place you shouldn't, then it should be a safety curtain involved. But it wasn't always the same. And in the pulp and paper industry for many years, when the poor operator wanted to start the equipment to put it at work, and there was a big pile of paper, not as small as this one, but a huge one, and in the last moment he saw the last couple of sheets which are out of the pile and he just wanted to arrange them properly and suddenly the guillotine cutter, the paper guillotine cutter, bang, was ripping his hand off. And it had to happen many, many times for so many operators during the year, especially when the industry boomed after the Second World War until the industry understood that these are major issues and they had to protect the workers. So then, not only those, there were sensors involved to try to prevent access in unwanted area, in forbidden areas, not only there were the red stop buttons involved, but also there was, a, uh, there was an invention back in time regarding how do you start that equipment, which was, let's say, the uh, paper guillotine cutter. So for instance, if you have access to one start button, the green one, like you can see, the button is activated because it's coming together with the light. This is what I did in the application. And the, the operator, the worker, had the other hand free to go around. The danger was still there. So then, they imagined two ways to do. Some equipments they had, some equipment they had, they, they had two start buttons. So if you won't, only were pushing one of them, nothing was happening. If you were pushing the other one, you could see it's activated, but nothing was happening. You had to push both of them in order for that to happen. So you could stop it from here. You could stop it from here. You could also have access to the safety curtain and of course you have access to the emergency stop but the thing was about the position of these two buttons on the equipment so again one of the ways was this one the distance between the buttons was something like that so with one hand you couldn't activate both because even with a bigger hand than mine you couldn't reach both start buttons at the same time, but the best way was to space these two start buttons, the green ones, at a distance of at least three, four feet, or in the metric, at least one meter. So there was no way the operator could push these two buttons without using both hands. So by forcing the operator to use both hands, then, there was a, a, a major safety element involved, even with the start buttons and not only with the stop ones, because you expect the stop buttons to do what they say, to stop. But you don't expect the start buttons to be involved in the protection, in the safety. And they are, okay? So that's exactly the thing about explaining the function AND. In order to have this output energized, which is our motor in the situation, you have to have this button on, and this button on together. This is the function AND. You have to have this and this together. And only then the equipment is going to start. 
But again, I left long wires like this, like this, because the button's position on the equipment was like that, spaced at at least one meter distance from each other, and you knew for a fact how the buttons were activated because you could see the light clearly. But if you're only pushing one of them, it doesn't matter how many times, nothing would have happened. You had to push both. Okay? And surely I can stop it here. Okay? But it's starting from here. So again, let's take a conclusion about this function and for today. And we're going to go back to our relay ladder diagram. If you remember from the last time, it was this one here. In order for the output, this is my output, to be energized, you had to have these two together, A and B, and this was the function or involved. This was last time. But today, I write it here for today. What do we have today? The output is still here. And in order to have it energized, take a look at the difference. In order for the output to be energized, unlike in the OR function where you had either A or B, so as soon as one of them was going on like this or like that, or even both, then the energy was coming from the positive voltage to the negative one and reaching the output. So the output was having here the positive voltage, and on the other end, the negative, so the output was on. But this time today, you have it like this. You have to have this switch on and, and the other switch on in order to energize the output. So the big difference between the function OR last time and the function AND today is that for the function OR, the two contacts are in parallel together, so parallel. connection and in order to get the function and working you have to have a serious connection see so this is the thing about it okay as for the as for the math and all the other explanation the technical ones with the boolean logic regarding the function and this is going to be for the next time Thank you very much for watching. See you next Tuesday. Bye-bye.